Assalamu alaikum students. This is your instructor for Babatun and welcome to the course of O Levels Computer Science. So, another video on the topic of standard methods of solution. Today I'm going to tell you about what are the standard methods that we are going to learn in your course. Now, before starting or before going into the detail of standard methods, let me tell you the term method. The word method in programming is basically, it can also be called as a function or you can also call it a subroutine. And if I talk about definition of this word method, so in programming, it is nothing but the line of code that we write for a specific task. So it's a line of code that a programmer writes to do some specific task. Let me give you an example for that. Let's suppose I have marks for a student and I want to calculate its percentage. So I will be making a method for percentage and I will calculate through that. The name of the method will be percentage. Inside that, I will write some line of code. This line of code is going to help you to calculate percentage of students. Okay, now the interesting thing. A good thing about method is that you can use it or we can say reuse it as many times as you want. What it means? It means that we write the code only one time. And we can use the same code for as many data sets as you want. Let's suppose in my class, I have 30 students. So to calculate the percentage, I need to have maybe 30 percentage methods. Maybe you are thinking that it will work this way, that you have to make 30 percentage methods, one for each student, maybe. But if you are thinking like that, so you are wrong. No. The good thing about method is that you define it once and you can use it as many times as you want. It means only one percentage method will be used for 30 students, 60 students, 100 students, or as many students as you have in your class. So you can reuse it for each of your student. The only thing that will change is your data set or the marks that you are going to give to your method. So what it will take, it will every time the method is going to take new marks for, new, for different students, and then it will be calculating a different percentage for each student. So now let me tell you that what are the standard methods that you can understand and you can use in different programmings to make your work easy and reusable. In your book, we have some standard methods starting with the first one. In this video, I'm just going to give you an overview of all of these standard methods. And from the next videos, we are going to see the detail of each of these standard methods. So the first standard method is named as totaling. The method of totaling is going to help me to calculate total of a list of numbers. Let's suppose I have a list of student marks. And I want to calculate all the total of all of these marks. So I have to use the method of totaling or any of the list of numbers. Let's suppose there are 15 numbers in a list and you want to calculate the sum of all of these numbers. So this totaling method is going to help you out. The second method that you are going to study would be the counting method. The method of counting is going to help you to count the number of times an action will be performed. Number of times uh, an action is performed, the work is done, or whatever. 
so that it is basically a counting method. For example, how many students passed an exam or how many uh, cupcakes are needed in a party. So like that, it's a counting method. The third one that you are going to study would be maximum, minimum, and the average method. The maximum method will be used to find out the largest number in a list of numbers. Largest number. Similarly, with that, we will be talking about the minimum method. Minimum standard method will help you to find out the smallest number in a big list of numbers. And along with that, we will also see how to calculate average for a list of numbers. So, okay. After that, we have the fourth standard method that is the linear search method. It's a very useful method because this is going to help you out to search for any numbers in your list. Search a number in a big list of numbers or even you can search for a name search for any word in your list. Let's suppose you have a list of student names. There are lots of names in your list and you need to find out is Parva there in your list or not. So you will be using the linear search method to find out. Now the fifth and the last standard method that we will see will be the bubble sort method. It is a very useful method because this is going to help you to arrange or sort out your list of numbers, list of alphabets and whatever. So for a list of numbers, you can sort them in ascending order or in descending order. Similarly, for some alphabets or let's suppose uh, we have names, so we can sort them in alphabetic order. So it is, it depends upon what work we want to do. These are all the five standard methods that we will be studying in the next videos. So stay tuned, stay connected and do not forget to subscribe the channel. See you. Bye-bye.